you, dude. Sorry about that. All right. There we go. No, it's all good. It uh, it would it'd be breaking tradition right? if things went smoothly on these. Ah, <laughs> uh, how you busy, doing, man? man? Like it, like usual. Right. So, so is, is oh, this yeah. kind of like your weekend? Yeah, or... I'm, I'm in the middle of my weekend. Yeah. Gotcha. I uh, I sympathize. I, I work graveyard shifts, so it's a uh, you know it's a hard life. Yeah, we I gotta mean, do it right. I don't know. Three days a week for me anymore. It's not really that hard. It's just uh, long hours. Damn. Uh, uh, what do you do? Steel, steel shop, or fabricator, food? welder. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I've done that for. Oh yeah. Fuck, twenty eight years now. Something like that. <clears throat> gotcha. That's pretty. That's pretty cool, though. Yeah. Uh, frees up a lot of time. Well, hell yeah. All right. Uh, I'll go ahead and do our little yeah. little intro thing here. Um, everybody tuning in, welcome. I'm Ryan. I am. <laughs> Scratch that. I'll edit it. Everybody tuning in, welcome. I'm Ryan with Rigs of Death Metal. My guest today is. JT from Unmerciful, formerly of Origin, and once upon a time touring guitar player for Cannibal Corpse. How's everybody doing? But so yeah, man, uh, let's get right into it. Um, so first off, how long has Unmerciful been, been going on? I I think I found y'all was it's 2015 or six, when did Wrath uh, Wrath came out in Wrath 2020? And come out. Um, yeah, it came out like right after all that COVID shit yeah. hit. So, um, Unmerciful gotcha. has actually been around since oh, uh, Clinton James started it in two thousand one. So it's been around. It wasn't oh, wow. under the Unmerciful okay. name then, but um, it later became Unmerciful. <clears throat> okay. Damn. Um, and. <laughs> I guess this all, a lot of this could be answered with a Wikipedia search, but um, what was the gap between Origin and Unmerciful? Uh, for me? For, um, yeah, yeah. Well, my last tour with Unmerciful was in 2002, and that was the Nile Arch Enemy Hate Eternal Tour. And I left right after that. And then I think I joined Unmerciful for the first time uh, at the beginning of 2004. <clears throat> and then okay. I got the call for Cannibal in May of 2004 and had to, to bow out of Unmerciful, obviously. So um, so I did the Unmerciful th or the, the Cannibal thing, came back, rejoined Unmerciful. Um, we recorded Unmercifully Beaten, went on a tour with Cannibal and Dying Fetus and Necrophagist. And, and then uh, things didn't really work out for me during that tour, so I uh, I bat out of the band. Um, got labeled a band quitter. It was just me not getting along with other members mostly, so I figured I'd remove really? myself from the equation because the common denominator was me. Apparently I was just an asshole, so... <laughs> Um, <laughs> oh yeah um, kind of like a nice little brief history for those that may not be completely familiar um, which I think when I first discovered Origin it was the music it, it was through like a, a, a music video because that's how I always discovered music early on but um, it was uh, I can't remember the title but it was you you were in uh, most likely finite the song title. Off of it. I think that was. Uh, we I flew to Brooklyn, shot that video, and while I was there shooting that video, I did the interview for the Cannibal Corpse. Um, I think it was the Evisceration Plague DVD, or maybe it's the Centuries of Torment. I can't remember which one. <clears throat> okay. I uh, <laughs> I, f I forgot that you got. I forgot that you were in that, because um, I remember revisiting that like I don't know a year or two ago. Yeah. 
And I was like, oh, shit, yeah. there's JT. But, uh, um, you uh, you kind of recently switched back I to did. doing guitar for Unmerciful, right? Yeah. Or you, okay. Um, do you have any kind of preference, or is it just, uh, you know, whatever the task uh, requires? Kind well, of thing I prefer guitar. guitar. Yeah. Um, yeah. I started playing when I was 13. I've always loved it. Uh, when I wanted to start jamming again, there was already two players, two guitar players in Unmerciful. So I went ahead and just picked up bass duties. So I could come back into the band. And then I did that for nine years. I was on bass for nine years with the band. Oh, wow. Which, I mean, you were just, for for bass being like your, your secondary instrument, you were extremely you. proficient at it. Uh, yeah, absolutely. What, um, well, I'm kind of, I'm kind of curious, what was your uh, live setup for bass and guitar, honestly? Because I, I, I play both as well. Well, for my so. guitar rig, um, I've got, well, right now I've, I've got a dual rectifier, which I got while I was with Cannibal. So I've had it for 18 years. And then I've got a our Marshall cab that I've actually put Mesa speakers in. So essentially it's just a Mesa cabinet now um, because yeah. they're both, both made with birch wood. And... <clears throat> but the, uh, the Mesa V30s actually sound different from the rest of Celestian V30s. Uh, um, so I made sure yeah. I got those, had those put in and a buddy of mine revamped my rectifier, uh, retubed it, pushed the gain on it, retentioned things that needed retentioned. Um, actually put in some, uh, I'm sure I'm not going to say the right letters, but like a GL 34s instead of the five U fours for the main tubes, because they, oh, okay. <clears throat> they pull less current from the amp. So there's more headroom. It doesn't sag as much. And then I got the 6L6s for the other tubes. Um, and it, it sounds way hotter than it ever has. So so you actually run it on the uh, the tube rectifier yeah. setting instead of the solid state yeah. rectifier? Okay. Uh, kind of, that's kind of neat. That's a little uh, uncommon for a lot of yeah. death metal Mesa players. That's pretty uh, neat. But I've, uh, I've got my BC Rich guitars. I've got the two Vs. Um, my main one that I use is the Icon, the Pat O'Brien. And I've got a Fishman in there. And recently I put in a FU Tone tone block. Um, the Floyd Roses normally come with like a 32 millimeter block. And I upped it a little bit and put a 34 in. Got some silent springs. Just trying to push it as much gain as I can out of the guitar with the rig. Um, the only pedal I have is a DBX 266 XL. I got a noise gate, okay. expander, limiter, whatever compressor. But uh, other than that, I, I don't use a pedal. Um, for my bass rig, I've got the Spectre, Alex Webster, uh, the five string. <clears throat> And I got like a 2012, I think, 2013, before they started putting the Seymour Duncan, Alex Webster, Hammer Smash bass pickups in there. So I got the EMG 40 okay. DCs in it. And then I actually bought nice. a rig from Alex, um, the old SWR 750X and the Megalith cabinet. Okay. And then I've got a dark glass b7k ultra pedal oh I, yeah. I love the dark glass stuff I, I had one for i had the b7k for like a brief minute and i had to sell it i need to get another one at some point um it which i mean for me i'm just you know writing and tracking stuff here at the house anymore but uh i don't know i like it a lot better than the kemper for for bass but Hell yeah. Uh, 
which uh which rectifier model do you have and i and i yeah, think it was like fine that serviced it right um it's a dual rectifier i i don't know it's 18 years old 19 years old now so <clears throat> um sure. I, I, it's over cleanse <laughs> i don't have it here with me to pry into but gotcha okay well uh Let's see, what would you say would be kind of your inspiration for dialing in tone? Like, um, is there anybody specifically that you're trying to emulate or have you just Not kind really of emulate. found your There's own different thing? different albums that I love the guitar tone on. Um, actually, Gorgasm, Stab Wood, and Inter Intercourse. I love the guitar tone on that. It's aggressive. It's not piercing with the highs, but there's highs in there that you can tell. Um, of course, like Evisceration Plague, Kill, they all have great guitar tone. Um, but no, no, I'm just trying to go for my own, just as much gain as we can. And right. like I've, I'm pushing quite a bit of bass in my guitar cabinet now. So clean bass, yeah. so to say. Sure. Um... Out of, out of curiosity, because I'm I'm a big EMG guy myself. Uh, what do you what do you find in the Fishman pickups that um, might not have in the EMGs? For me, the EMGs tend to like compress everything, so it's kind of like block notes, so to say. And with the Fishman, it's sure. there's more clarity. Uh, the notes seem a little more rounded. Um, yeah, I just think they sound better. Um, I, I haven't really gotcha. fished around and done the whole pickup swapping thing a whole lot. I've been a EMG 81 guy for a couple of decades now. So <clears throat> we switched over to Fishman's a few years ago and we've been happy with them. My, uh, my oh, NJV yeah. still has the EMG, so I can still swap back and forth between the two anyway. Sure. Have you ever tried, um, kind of doing like the higher voltage mod or anything I have like not. that with the EMGs. Um, they've got, um, I've got, I've got them in one of my EMG guitars, the 24 volt mod. Um, and it's like, uh, it's this tiny little pack. It's like smaller than a nine volt. Um, and it takes two, I want to say, what are they? A24 batteries, okay, like yeah. doorbell batteries. And it, and it's like two of those. Um, and that's it. You just hook it up like a regular nine volt. And it's like way more headroom, way less compressed. But uh, yeah, yeah, like I, said, I haven't really messed with the whole uh, pickup uh, thing. I just, we got interested in the, the fishermen, sure. tried them out and liked them and kind of went with that. Gotcha. What, uh, what would you say? your inspiration for just riffing and songwriting like um where where are some places that you tend to pull um, from well i'm gonna go back with the gorgasm stab one and of course um i've been listening to that a lot lately along with uh i mean i don't know how much inspiration or influence i'm gonna have from it but uh distant tombs the king light i've been listening to a lot lately <clears throat> and then of course um suffocation has always been an influence and emulation. I've always loved the darker, heavier type riffing and always been a huge fan of that. So, Right. That's killer. Um, who would you say going back maybe even further when you first picked up the instrument, who was it that exactly that got you started? Which it could be like a, you know, Famous like rock star guitar hero, or could just be Randy somebody Rose. personal. I, I was thirteen, and yeah. I heard the uh, the tribute album. I never really listened to Ozzy before that, but I heard that tribute album, and I heard the way he played on it, and I was just like, "That's it." I and the first guitar I bought or I got since I was thirteen, I didn't really buy it myself, but I got a, a Vantage Flying V, a Gibson knockoff. It was a cream colored white pickguard. Mm -hmm. Got that in a little crate practice amp. <clears throat> um, and I had that until I was like 19, something like 
that, and then I ended up getting um, an Ibanez RG770 and a P PV120 okay. amp with, with the half stack. Kind of dropped out there a second. Uh, there you go. I think you're back. That's a killer rig, though. I mean, a lot of people nowadays would be clamoring for uh, yeah. a 120 and yeah, 770. Yeah, I regret selling that 770. I wish I still had it. Yeah. yeah. Trying to let the connection pick back up a little bit here. Um, what are some goals that you set for yourself uh, musically, both on a personal level as well as with the band? Um, personal level, my only goal is to just keep flying. I mean, I don't really set personal goals for myself. I would like to have our music written and ready to go to the studio by the end of the year for the next album for us. Um, whether we make yeah. that or not, I don't know, but that's what I'd like to have happen. We got a lot going on personally, each of us though, so we'll see if it happens. Gotcha. Uh, well, with that, is there uh, is there anything scheduled no, or lined up at the moment? Writing, writing, and doing pre-production stuff. Um, we, I have written another gotcha. song, a new song that we actually played in South America a few months ago, and then and uh, nice. Clint's got another song that is five minutes and dark as hell and has twenty-seven different tales and. Pretty crazy stuff. Um, we're always trying to push the envelope. So, right. Well, it's kind of cool keeping yourselves open like that to kind of focus on trying to write the best you can. Um, hold on. hold tight, real quick. I'm gonna try something okay. to see if it'll help the connection a little bit. I don't know, that may have helped, maybe not. <laughs> Let me see here. All right. Um, is, uh, I know you've been the longtime Mesa guy or even with uh, base gear, you know, Ampeg, what have you. Uh, is there anything gear-wise that you are kind of maybe looking to replace something or maybe something? something you're wanting to add on or it could be something practical it could be something fun is there anything that you kind of got your eye on not at the moment no i do know that once i do decide to update my base gear i most likely go with like aguilar or uh dark glass stuff i don't know i haven't really looked into it too much um just because i'm trying to be been trying to get my guitar gear back updated and i think i've got that pretty good now so I think I'll just stick with that for a while. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, do you, and you kind of have like some, some stuff at home, I'm sure, for like uh, demo yeah, writing. Yeah. And... I just got a laptop, a little pod, a little, little scarlet, and a, just a studio figure. Nothing crazy. Yeah, right. that's all you need. <laughs> uh, honestly, I, I'm I'm still a big fan of a lot oh, of yeah, old I've pod had, I've had that thing for stuff. twenty uh, years, and then I don't need to replace it. It still works great for me. Right. I uh, I kind of want to snag one of those, like the old like uh, black with the red panel. The line six was it the flex tone okay. or flex tone yeah. two, something like that. Which, which I think it's basically just a pod, but in a head shell. But uh, well, uh, <laughs> man, we kind of breeze through these questions a little bit here. Um, let me see. Well, uh, uh, I know you uh, tend to tour a little bit more extensively i guess with uh origin and and then you know corpse there for a while 
Um, got any uh, interesting uh, road stories um, or anything like that from either band? Oh, yeah, there's all kinds of stories. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, we did, yeah, when, working, when we first started out and got our first album out with Relapse, we toured a lot. We toured with Cephalic, um, Exhumed, we did the Contamination Tour 2000. Um, actually got to hop on the end of Death Across America 2000 with Vader and Cephalic. Um, and Dying Fetus. And then let's see, we did Cryptopsy in 2001 with Candiria and Poison the Well. Kind of an odd building, but um, Candiria was incredible every night. Their drummer went in and out of timing and just went fluid. It's incredible to watch. Um, I think the first show, I remember the first show of the Crypt Aussie tour, James Lee was on stage with us, obviously, because he's a vocalist. And during Manual Instincts, I can hear him, because he's right next to me, on stage throwing up. <laughs> during our set. Um, <laughs> so that was the beginning of a adventurous tour. Um, we did... Summer Slaughter, 2001, with Bader and Gimlets, Impaled, um, Withered Earth, and Enter Self. It was like a, a fest tour is what it was like. So it was like six bands on that tour. Um, let's see. We did, did that Nile tour with Hades Toronto Arch Enemy. Um, played big places there. To annoy the hell out of Carl Sanders. <laughs> um, it's not. I, I've hard heard that's it is not hard, hard, to, hard do. to do, and you don't really know when you do it because his face doesn't really change, but his tone does, and he goes for the throat when he says shit. So, <laughs> damn. <laughs> um, and then what's uh, what was what was his biggest pet peeve that got exploited? People being side stage while they were playing. Um, I've heard him. I've heard him taking phones from people <laughs> while they were recording while they were playing. Just all kinds of stuff. Oh, oh wow! <clears throat> and then, like I said, Damn. I took a break from that, <laughs> and then in 2004, I got the call of Cannibal, and and I flew down to Tampa, met up with Alex. He drove me to George's house, and I got to stay with George and his wife, Stacy, for three weeks while I learned their 18-song set. And then we went to Mexico, did some shows there, and then we went to South America, did the No Sleep Tour there, because we had to fly everywhere we played. So we would play, go back to the hotel for maybe two hours, go to the airport, and fly all over, and then repeat for like 10 days. <clears throat> but uh, that was a whirlwind. That was surreal. It was crazy. Did like 90 shows in six months, something like 53 countries. Um, That's insane, dude. Got, well, <laughs> we didn't get detained, but we got held up at customs in Ukraine for like 24 hours. After being held at the Belarus border with gun towers for eight hours, um, both of those shows got canceled. And then we had to pay the Ukrainian government a thousand euro to drive through with a police escort so that we could make the next show in Serbia. Wow. It was, what a, it was, it was pretty what crazy. a hit trip. And yeah. I mean, it was kind of before we had, like, good cell phone plans, so we couldn't really just call back home and be like, hey, we're uh, stuck. <clears throat> but uh, no, I got to play a bunch of fest that year. I actually got to play Vakken. Um So, yeah, it was, it was crazy. It's wild. But do you uh 
do you kind of miss hitting the road as heavy as as you used to, or are you pretty content with uh, where a uh, un yes no. is um, right now? If it was back into a bus, yeah, it'd be great. But driving the van tour thing, they kind of suck when we were younger, and that really sucks when you're older. <laughs> I mean, I still love playing. I still love doing it all, all of that. But um, yeah, it's it's cool. It's really cool. I I like getting back out and touring, but doing it as extensively as we used to do, um, everything's so much more expensive nowadays too. It's pretty. It gets pretty rough. Like we went out last right. summer with decrepit births and pathology and stabbing when gas was like six dollars a gallon and yeah it was, it was pretty expensive to be on the road right uh yeah yeah, yeah especially the last couple of years well uh let me uh shift gears on you a little bit um been following been following you on here for a little while and uh, I know, like me, yeah. you're an avid weightlifter. Um, and uh, so for those that are maybe kind of aspiring into it or uh, trying to, I know you've got a pretty impressive deadlift from some of your posts and stuff. Um, what are some, like, good kind of accessory kind of workouts for improving your deadlift? Um Besides going through the motion of a deadlift, I would definitely sure. like lat pull down, seated row, um, hyper extensions, just stuff to help your core, sit ups, crunches, all that good shit. Uh, any core strengthening right. exercises, um, even leg extensions, stuff like that, squats, anything to help with pushing and. Because you're going to use everything deadlifting. Oh, yeah. Oh, my 17 year old kid just got 385 here a couple weeks ago. So I got to I gotta keep up That's with that kid right now. <laughs> right. right. I say, I, I think best I got was, I don't know, maybe around 415, 420, something like that. Like, just just a little bit over the four plate or you know yeah four right. plate eight plates four however you want to look at it yeah yeah a little bit over but well how much do you weigh if you don't want to <laughs> uh i've been hitting the gym pretty hard lately so i'm about six foot and i just got back up to 259 not bad. um so yeah my best was 565 when I was lifting over time, um, yeah. I got five. I got a weird setup on my waist. Uh, some of my waist don't weigh what they say they do. They weigh more. So I weighed it. Oh, yeah. I got 503 one day, which sounds like a weird, weird number. but um, And that was sure six months ago, I think, something like that. Still not bad for, I mean, I'm getting up their age so <laughs> which i uh I've, I've been kind of steering a little bit more away from deadlift and squat and trying to just change it up a little bit um still doing a lot still doing a lot of leg press um <laughs> funny we, we started talking about lifting weights and kevin Fassard pops in right okay, kevin uh, <laughs> Kevin's awesome. Um, yeah, I think leg press, I think for like uh, a third set I was doing, what I get? Six, like 670 for eight reps, huh. something like that for, for, for just doing leg press. Yeah. Yeah, we have to talk weights, Kevin. <laughs> yeah, that's I, uh, my my squat was 
I think I got 500 or six times on squat. My lower back started, I started feeling my lower back, so I stopped. I didn't want to, didn't want to injure myself. Um, the best leg press I ever had was 1,200 four times. Um, my legs got really strong. Like, I had to slow down my legs because they were making the rest of my body look small. <clears throat> so, <laughs> but yeah. yeah. Sure. Um, the best bench press I've gotten was 405. Um, I could Damn do that these days. I might be able to get 350, but you can ask push. Right. Yeah, I um, can't remember if it was last year or year before. I, I I fucked my back up pretty bad. Um, so since then, I've I, I, that's kind of what made me dial back a little bit on, you know, deadlift and squat. But I'm gonna try to start incorporating squats back into it. I think. But well, well, maybe try. Uh, it. We'll see. If you got it in your back or something, <laughs> trying to get back into it, maybe try the Smith machine squat. See if that helps out. That way you don't have to worry about yeah. balancing it forward and back. Sure. <clears throat> exactly. And then for depth, like but, my kid, well, um, I guess mm-hmm. they use a hex bar at their high school, so. Yeah. Yeah, we got one of those at, at our gym. But. Yeah, I I was I always found those so freaking awkward though. I don't know, but I just right. got so used to doing standard. I didn't I wasn't even really that big of a fan of uh yeah. doing wide stance or sumo. Yeah. Um uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe I'll give it a, another shot. But hell I I bought all I bought, you know, nice weight belt, the knee wraps and all this shit. I'd like to right. it not to go to waste, you know. But, well, dude, uh, I've pretty much ran out of uh, questions except for our wrap up here, which is, uh, you know, give me your top four death metal bands and or albums. Four, huh? (laughs) Um, Top four. Top four bands and albums. Um, Let's go with Immolations, Close to a World Below. Uh, The guitar tone on that was also sick. Um, I I think it's the most aggressive album. I saw them on this album. Um, I think in Milwaukee Metal Fest the first time, but I've I've seen them other doing that album. It was incredible. Um, yeah. Huge fan of that album. Um, and then of course you've got Effigy of the Forgotten Suffocation. Uh, to me, that's the fucking death metal bible. That is that is mm-hmm. the album. Um, and of course I'm an old guy so I'm throwing whole albums out but uh, the Gorgas Erosion Sanity for me was incredible great, great album um, fuck um, I have to go with fucking probably, <laughs> probably it's always the worst path of the weekend I'm sure I that's a good one done other Hell yeah. sick albums that I I'm a huge fan of, but right now those are the four that I'm coming up with, so that's my answer. That's a killer list, man. Well, Jeremy, thank you so much for coming on here, man, taking the time to, to chat and nerd out with us a little bit. Um, is it? I know you guys don't really have – like I normally give this uh, spot for, like, any kind of plugs or nothing, um, but if there's – nothing lined up or anything you want to particularly shout out. Um, I guess we can always just tell people just follow Unmerciful and, and follow everybody's uh, personal page. Try to stay tuned and wait to see the next killer album or next, uh, yeah, I mean, next you shows. Can, you can still buy merch. We've still got merch. Um, unmercifulmusic.com takes you right to the merch. Um, yeah. We're, we're gearing up to get the next album out there. So expect uh, more of the same with added stuff from, from us. Hell yeah. And I see uh, Paul, Ryan, Paul Ryan in the chat there. So what's up, Paul? 
but yeah all right uh thanks again man and thank you everybody for tuning in it's been an absolute pleasure and uh enjoy uh your sort of weekend <laughs> yeah off, thank man. you for having me man i appreciate it <laughs> you too absolutely